Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in again for another weekly update on news and information about DCS World. I'm your host, Prickly Hedgehog, and I must say it's, uh, it's very nice to be here because I was not expecting to be recording today. Uh, as many of you know, we did have a death in the family this week. My father-in-law passed away very much unexpectedly. He had been having some health issues over the last year, but uh, his, um, his passing was not expected. And it's been really tough on myself and, of course, my wife particularly and the family as we kind of reel from that uh, event and uh, try to make sense of the chaos here as we uh, as we move forward in life. And it's, it's like I said, it's been a very challenging week. So um, obviously we really appreciate all the kind words this week. And uh, I definitely speak on behalf of Mrs. Prickly Hedgehog. It's been very pleasing and very, very pleasant to have those kind words in a, in a very difficult time. So again... It's nice to be here, and I hope this video finds you well. I'm excited about this week's newsletter, so let's turn to that now and talk about some of these exciting things. We're going to talk about the Mosquito, which is hopefully going to be into early access soon, and an update on the Hind. And also, it's worth looking here too. This newsletter kind of, Eagle Dynamics has sort of played its hand here a little bit with some interesting language um, that it has thrown out there in, in, in terms of its update this week which I think we'll talk about as well. Plus, hopefully I can remember, we've got some stuff from uh, Reflected Simulations who mentioned some interesting things about the game and uh, uh, what he was working on, Greg Gales, who, who runs uh, Reflected, Reflected Simulations, excuse me, uh, and what he was doing with regards to the clouds and what he's noticed as a result of this 2.7 update. So um, really cool there. So let's talk about the Mosquito first. Now, I've become increasingly endeared to this aircraft. I've always liked it, and I'm not, um, I've, I haven't really spent time mastering the World War II aircraft. I, I'm still a complete novice with those aircraft. And while I do like them, I just haven't had the time to uh, spend on them as much as I do with the jet aircraft that I own, which of course are more complex in terms of the avionics and weapon systems that they have. So they take a little bit more time um, to master in that sense, but the, the flying perhaps is a little bit easier generally. Whereas the World War II aircraft, you know, the flying is a little bit more challenging, especially um, to get them up and down safely without, you know, putting going nose first and flipping the thing upside down. There's some quirks with them. So as I've researched the Mosquito a little bit more, I've become increasingly endeared to it. I'm really looking forward to getting behind the virtual controls and giving this thing um, some beans and uh, just seeing how well it performs because it is a lovely, lovely aircraft and it has a really interesting history which we may hopefully hear, we'll have some time to talk about that as well. So, but let's, let's look at what they've got going on here because this is a remarkable achievement for Eagle Dynamics in part because of the unique history of this aircraft. So what we're going to get in early access is as follows. Remember it's the uh, Mosquito FB Mark VI, and the FB stands for Fighter Bomber. Uh, remember too that when it was first developed, it was designed as a reconnaissance aircraft. The only armament that the aircraft had was actually defensive and that was at speed it could actually outrun its rivals by about 100 miles uh, an hour so it was, it was incredibly fast and then uh, once the um, Royal Air Force sort of realized hey uh, this is a very very capable aircraft what would happen if we started throwing on some um, guns and things and arming this thing and then you know hey presto we've got one of the most uh, capable fighter bombers of the war one of the most versatile aircraft and arguably one of the more famous ones. So, beautiful aircraft. So what they've done here is that all the systems and components have been modeled. Remember, this is gonna be for the early access, and uh, they've done it, what they describe as excruciating detail, which is a feat in itself, because one of the downfalls of this aircraft is that it was almost entirely made of wood. And after the war, a lot of the aircraft simply rotted away. Um, they were lost forever, unfortunately. So there's very few examples around. So this is an interesting challenge that uh, Eagle Dynamics has obviously overcome. There's about four, maybe five, I think, aircraft that actually are flyable. So very, very few. Uh, so they're worth their weight in gold, really, in terms of uh, the amount of money that's been spent on restoring these. Quite a few of them were actually restored in New Zealand. I think about three of the four flying examples. Um, and I could be wrong on the exact numbers there, but I know it's only a handful of aircraft. Um, but I understand that uh, New Zealand... Um, uh, Rebuilders have actually uh, restored several of these um, aircraft to flyable condition. 
so they're probably some of the world um, experts in this area. Very difficult to um, to do that um, given the um, lack of parts. A lot of stuff has had to be built basically from scratch. So um, so there you know th again some of the challenges for this aircraft uh, to get it into the virtual environment by Eagle Dynamics. They've included rather interestingly too and rather handily the um, the cooling system updates that they made for the Thunderbolt. Those uh, features are going to be part of this aircraft as well, which is really, really cool. In addition to the early access um, uh, features there, they're going to include the following, the high quality um, external 3D model. We've got six degrees of freedom, fully clickable cockpit with the latest visual effects. We've got a, a flight dynamics based on official reports, our own CFD research and pilot feedback. We've got full fuel system and optional external tanks, full electrical system, full hydraulic and pneumatic system and propeller feathering. The armament for early access is going to be four British Browning 303 machine guns, four Hispano 20 millimeter guns, uh, 250 pounds and four, uh, 500 pound bombs in the bomb bay un and under each wing. So again, a pretty versatile aircraft, like I said, but uh, one of its downfalls was unfortunately not during its combat experience, but actually post-war, just sitting around in um, sort of storage. Really, that wooden airframe led to um, it, its its demise, and so we're very, very lucky that Eagle Dynamics has had access to the you know surviving airframes, I guess, and data from actual pilots and things to um, to you know recreate this, which is really, really cool. Post early access. Now, remember quick segue here of course is that the aircraft is not for sale just yet if you're looking for it on the website it's not uh, available for sale uh, same with the hind hopefully that'll change very shortly here with the mosquito but uh, post early access they're going to add in other weapons which includes the rockets uh, radio units uh, both the transmitter and the receiver they're also going to include the historical accurate navigation system for world war ii aircraft as well as a controllable AI navigator radio operator. So we're not going to get that AI guy just yet. And that's a unique feature for Eagle Dynamics. I know many of us are familiar with it um, in the F-14 Tomcat from Heat Blue, which has, has been a phenomenal addition to the game. But that feature apparently is going to come at a later date. When the Mozzie becomes available in early access, they will obviously be considering feedback from the community and working on the next stages of development. Now, um, they're going to include, though, the damage model, um, which is pretty sophisticated, and it considers the internal wood structure of the airplane and uses each internal element of the aircraft, which includes the oil, the air, hydraulic and cooling systems, the engine throttle trim, and the airframe's main strength spars and stringers to calculate the visual damage. And we are now able to consider all of these factors, which in turn enables us to more accurately simulate damage to the airframe, which is going to affect the flight model in some way, shape, or form. So, you, for example, you may get damage to the wing skin. This is going to lead to a decrease in the lift and cause more drag. Damage to the spar will cause strength reduction and potentially wing snap under certain strains. So, the development shots that you're seeing here are hopefully um, uh, pleasing to the eye. And... Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this and um, what uh, Reflected Simulations was talking about, who Greg Gales is actually going back and retroactively doing some adjustments to include the clouds in all of his uh, campaigns. And he basically stipulated that these new visual features that we're getting with regards to clouds, um, it's like a different game, he said. So this mosquito and this 2.7 update i'm very much intrigued as to you know what it's going to mean for us as virtual pilots uh, visually it's it's looking pretty good i know we've talked about the potential frame rate hits we don't know for certain if that's true we have um uh, apparently have people have quoted to me big newy saying there wasn't a major frame rate uh, difference or there was no difference Again, this may be system dependent. Um, every every system's different. So hopefully that is the case because I'm very much looking forward to this aircraft being in the game and these these features that we're seeing, which I think are absolutely phenomenal um, and a high degree of realism, which is what we expect from Eagle Dynamics. And that's cool. It really is. Again, really interesting aircraft. The history of this aircraft is just fascinating. 
and again it's it's lent me um you know a lot of how would you say um um i don't know affection if you like for this aircraft i've always liked it but now i mean i'm just really intrigued by it and just because of how rare it is now um the fact that a lot of the aircraft are being rebuilt in new zealand for to you know flyable standard um uh, how how you know praiseworthy it is from pilots um a lot of um really interesting stories about some of the raids it was um involved in so really really cool stuff and again uh, i can't wait to see it in the game along with all these other updates but some cool things there with that reference to the um latest visual effects when I, mean, I think it might relate to some of the stuff that they're going to talk about here below with regards to the hind so let's turn now and look at something a little bit more modern and um a rotary wing aircraft rather than a fixed wing now the hind of course is you know also a two-person uh, aircraft and again you know eagle dynamics has been working hard on this to replicate some of the things that obviously heat blue has done and that's unique to eagle dynamics as well in terms of they haven't done that in in the past and they're now expanding it to these other aircraft which is very very exciting and it's going to be interesting to see how they um you know further develop those things and what they look like and how it compares to obviously heat blur system which um is pretty decent you know given the constraints of of, of having an ai in an aircraft rather than a, a, an actual human co-pilot if you like or human navigator again depending on which uh, which roles being played out so a lot of challenges there but uh you know pretty decent really considering those limitations that we have right now so the development report is as follows now they're currently improving in cockpit reflections now get this using a new pre-calculated ray tracing technique that hasn't really been mentioned before so again i'm very curious to know what that means the enhancement will be deployed to other modules in the near future as well so at some stage some of the cool things that we're going to be seeing visually are going to transfer themselves to other aircraft again that's very exciting in addition to those visual things they're adjusting the sight line direction controls and missile guidance from the operator's seat the operator ai features are being tested and debugging is going smoothly so i don't know if that means that things are going to be released on time um you know hopefully quarter three i think we're going to see that uh, maybe uh, you know who knows uh, obviously you two these things um you know not set in concrete <laughs> and we also want to see the apache as well so i don't think we're going to see an overlap of, to of those two things i know people have kind of talked about that and i know some people would prefer just the apache and why are they even bothering with the hind um you know, and I don't really have a comment on that. I think it's just cool. Who cares? Uh, both aircraft are fantastic. They're welcome in the game. I don't care that we're, uh, you know, one is going to come out ahead of the other. Either way, they're going to be massive additions to the game. Um, obviously, the Apache is very sophisticated, a lot more so perhaps than the Hind. You know, the Hind is a cool and unique aircraft and provides some more interesting helicopters than the game, which I'm sure the, you know, the helicopter pilots amongst us will be happy with and will be willing to to look into that and try it out see if they like it and i can't wait to see it in the game i think it's cool lastly this week we have just a little you know a plug if you like of reflected simulations again of their zone 5 campaign which features the f-14a primarily here and it is i guess a, a return to the 80s and uh the um um, top Gun School for the F-14 and it's a challenging campaign it's really well done I must say visually it's impressive you know flying over Nevada they use the Nevada test map and um, the voiceovers and the radio comms and stuff that they have are really really well done it's a challenging little campaign even though it's not necessarily a um, you know theater of war campaign but it is really enjoyable and like i said it is challenging and it is realistic which i really enjoy and it's quite immersive i've done several of the missions uh, probably half a dozen of the missions now and they are like i said are really really challenging i really enjoy it and i need to get back into some flying i obviously haven't had time lately so if you're considering the zone 5 campaign and if you're wondering if it's worth buying uh, it really is I, I i've thoroughly enjoyed this campaign and of course, uh, it features Dave Bio-Baranek, if you're not familiar with him, who was a, a former F-14 Rio 
great guy, uh, really interesting chap, really funny. I uh, really enjoy watching his interviews. He always, he's really laid back and he's always got a little smile going on. He's a clever, clever guy um, and um, full of knowledge, a very technical guy. Obviously not all the stuff that he uh, is asked about he can you know, uh, reveal due to secrecy and stuff like that. Um, but uh, he's able to give some pretty good breakdowns on some of the things um, that they did with the F-14, some of the quirks associated with the radar and also some of the training techniques that they operated during that time so uh, if you want to check out some of his videos um, you just do some YouTube searches because there's tons of uh, videos with bio uh, as I said he's a very cool guy very funny he's always got a almost always got a beer in his hand when he's on the, some of these uh, uh, these videos and I, I really appreciate that uh, you know that characteristic of, of him he's a, he's a fun fun chap and again very knowledgeable so well worth a watch if you want to learn a little bit more about the F-14 and some of the uh, quirks associated with the radar and, and how that aircraft operate, operated because it is a, a really cool aircraft and one of my favorite in the game. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you everyone for all the support. Like I said, it's been a tough week and I apologize this video um, may not be as sharp as, as it should be. I am I am pretty tired, pretty, pretty, pretty zonked to be honest, and uh, but I wanted to get this video out because it's just therapeutic in a weird way and I appreciate the feedback that I get and all the rest of it. So, we'll leave it there. Again, thanks for the support. Take care out there, look after yourself. You never know how life can throw you curveballs and challenges and uh, you know, enjoy it while you, while you can and carry on flying. We'll see you next time. This is Prickly Hedgehog out.